Good evening, y'all. This is Amber with Amber Poetry and Song. I'm coming to share a word with y'all from a vision that I had. I had this vision on October 30th, 2021 at 5.18 a.m. This was a vision of a tree with fruit on it. I looked up these numbers in blue in the Blue Letter Bible, um, the Strong's Concordance, and I found that 1030 stood for gnashing of teeth and 518 stood for to bring declare declaration report and tell okay so what this vision is saying what kind of fruits are you bearing are you bearing any fruits or are you barren um you know what are you doing with the gifts and the talents that the Lord has given you? Um, and are, are you wasting them? And are you ready for the Lord's return? Okay, so when it comes to the fruits, as a servant of God, you know, at some point we should be bearing fruit. We should, you know, everybody may be on, on different levels um, or different paces when it comes to their relationship with God, but we should all be bearing fruit or on our way to bearing fruit, um, being purged daily of the things that's not of him or like him. Yes, we're going to mess up. We're going to, um, you know, have flaws and stuff. We're going to fall sometimes but when you fall you get right back up and you keep on going and continue pressing towards the mark and to walk in the ways of christ those who are not changing who are staying the same who are not bearing any, any fruit but they're professing god professing to know him if you don't repent and you don't change you're going to be cast out into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth those who have gifts and talents and they're burying them and they will not um bring them forth step up and use them to edify the body or to bring glory to the most high those people will be cast into outer darkness where there are, um, is weeping and gnashing of teeth all of those things cause you to be unprofitable servants to the Lord. Um, yeah, all, all, all of that. Um, and also preaching one thing and doing the opposite of what you're preaching, you know, um, you know, professing God, but not upholding yourself to the standard of what you're preaching. Um, you know, just professing to know him, but not doing the things he say or the thing he requires of us or asks of us as servants, according to his word, not according to, you know, what we think or, or this world, according to what's written in the word, um, from studying his word, from researching, you know, for studying to show yourself approved. We have to bear fruit. We have to be constantly changing. We have to constantly be drawing close to the Lord, spending time with the Lord, because the more time you spend with the Lord, the more the more he can pour into you through his word. And depending on what gifts and talents you have through those things as well. But the more you draw close to him, the more he draws close to you and he's able to prune you and purge you of those things that's not like him. And to give you the courage to do the things he's asked you to do, um, to use the gifts and the talents he's asked you. Um, but like I said, the things that will cause you to be an unprofitable servant and will cause you to be cast into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth are things like not bearing the fruits, the fruits of the spirit, being afraid of things to to do things and the problem with being afraid 
um it's not necessarily the feeling of initial initially feeling afraid of things but it's what comes with being afraid which is most of the time when you're afraid it causes you to not do something or to do something um but like when it comes to your gifts and your talents or whatever god has asked you to do and you're afraid for one when you when you become afraid and you don't do those things it's disobedience and then two he can't use you when you're when you're afraid he cannot use you which makes you an unprofitable servant unto him and none of us want to be an unprofitable servant so we have to do away with the things that are not like him we have to do away with fear um we have to you know strive daily to practice what we preach um and to walk in his ways to be an example to exemplify christ and to you know walk in his fruits not grieving his holy spirit um doing things that we know that's going to be pleasing to our father in heaven and so i have some scriptures to go along with this um that the lord brought to mind when i was sitting before him with this vision and the first scripture that i'm going to go to is matthew chapter 8 and i'm going to start at verse 12. verse 12 says but the well i'm going to start at 11. it says and i say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with abraham and isaac and jacob in the kingdom of heaven but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The next place I'm going to go to is Matthew chapter 13. And I'm going to read verse 24 through 30. It says, Another parable put, forth, put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth, which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy have done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay. Lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather, but gather the wheat into my barn. The Lord, when he returns, he, he's going to get rid of the tares. He's, he's it's going to be a gathering. He's going to get rid of those tears, and those tears are going to be cast into outer darkness where there's weeping and, ma and gnashing of teeth. So this vision is, 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 is sort of like a reproving vision, um, a word of correction, um, warning to, you know, actually walk in the ways of the Lord, not in hypocrisy um not professing to know god but your fruits showing something else um i'm gonna skip down to verse 36 and continue reading it says then jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house and his disciples came unto him saying declare unto us the parable of the tears of the field he answered and said unto them he that soweth the good seed is the son of man the field is the world the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sold them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire 
there shall be welling and gnashing of teeth. Then as, uh, then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. So, like I said, this is a warning, uh, a word of warning for us to get it together before, you know, time is up, before the Lord returns, um, so that we could be a part of that batch that's considered wheat. Um, and this is for everyone, like, including myself. So don't take offense. Um, I'm going to go to... I'm going to skip down to verse 49 and read 49 and 50. 49 says, So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be welling and gnashing of teeth. Okay, and I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22, verses 11 through 14 says and when the king came in to see the guests he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment this is talking about the marriage of the, the marriage supper okay so it says and he said unto him friend how came it down hither not having a wedding garment and he was speechless then said the king to the servants bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many are called but few are chosen so many are called but but few are chosen many know of christ um come to the faith but few actually take the time out to truly you know know him to truly learn what is what it's like to walk in his ways to put on you know garments that are actually considered holy to him fruits of the spirit that are considered holy to the lord few actually take out the time to actually make sure that they're that that they are purged of the things of this world and the things and ways and, you know, behaviors and things that are not like the Lord. Um, and in this case, in this, what I just read, this man, he came to the wedding and he, you know, he's speaking in parable, but he came to the wedding thinking that he could just get in with anything on. This tells us that when it comes to God, when it comes to entering into the kingdom of heaven, you can't just get in by just having on any kind of garment. You know, what you feel is good um, or appropriate um, for the wedding, for the marriage supper. You have to have on the garments that he's telling us to have on. And you find those garments, what he's, he's telling us to have on, in his word. In his word, it tells you, you know, the, the things he wants us to do, the, the um, fruits he wants us to bear, the things he wants us to flee, to, to not have anything to do with. His word tells us all of it. The word is a blueprint for us to make it into the kingdom of God. And if you don't put on that attire that he's telling us, you know, for when he's coming to marry his bride, you're not going to make it in unless, unless you put on what he's asked you to put on. Putting on things like love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, gentleness faith courage because the lord can't use nobody that's afraid um boldness in christ yeah all of those things love um just many things um that you can find in the bible as you read and so i'm going to 
me see where was I okay so I'm gonna go to Matthew chapter 24 and read verses 50 through 51 okay so 50 says the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth the self-explanatory um, I'm gonna go to Matthew 25 and read verses 28 through 30 it reads take therefore the talent this is about the talents now take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents for i'm i'm reading kind of in the middle of this you can go back and read it on your own but it says um take therefore the talent for him and give it unto him which hath ten, ten talents for unto every one that hath shall be given and he shall have abundance but from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth and so you know i read this basically to, to, to let you know when it comes to the talents or the things the lord has equipped you with put inside of you to use for him for his glory that if you don't use it you know and you bury it it's going to be given to someone else and um you're going to be considered a servant that's unprofitable unto him which means you're going to be cast into outer darkness where there's weeping gnashing of teeth because he can't use you and so um i'm going to go to luke chapter 13. Let's see. And I'm going to read verse 24. It says, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When, when once the master of the house is risen up and have shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us and he shall answer and say unto you i know you not which you are then shall you begin to say we have eaten and drunk in thy presence and thou hast taught in our streets but he shall say i tell you i know you not which ye are depart from me all ye workers of iniquity there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see when ye shall see abraham and isaac and jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out and I'm gonna stop oh I'm gonna continue reading and it says and they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God and behold there are last which shall be first and there are first which shall be last and so um, I'm gonna stop I'm gonna stop reading there and um, yeah, this is a basically those people, those Christians who profess to know God, but they but they are not really, you know, about anything. They're they're saying they're they're professing him, but they're not really doing those things that he requires. This is who that's about. Um those are gonna be the people that are gonna be told, um, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, and that I know you not. I'm going to go to um, Revelations chapter 21, verse 8. This is dealing with those who are fearful. What the word says for those who are um, fearful and how fear, getting caught up in fear to where it causes you not to, um, to move, move forward will also cause you to be cast out into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth because you're not bearing fruit you're not um the the you're not really good for nothing if you're not bearing fruit so 28 
21 verse 8 sorry it says well i'm gonna start at verse 6 it says and he said unto me it is done i am alpha and omega the beginning and the end i will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely he that overcometh shall inherit all things and i will be his god and he shall be my son but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death that's self-explanatory um i'm going to go to romans chapter 2 and i think it i'm going to go to let me just see i may have forgotten to write down the rest of the scripture let me see okay so romans chapter 2 starting at verse 17 says yes i did forget to write the rest of it okay so it says behold thou art a jew and restest in the law and makest thy boast of god and knowest his will and approvest the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the, out of the law and art confident that thou thyself are a guide of the blind a light of them which are in darkness an instructor of the foolish a teacher of babes which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law thou therefore which teachest another teachest thou not thyself thou that preaches a man should not steal dost thou steal thou that says a man should not commit adultery dost thou commit adultery thou that abhorrest idols dost thou commit sac sacrilege thou that makest thy boast of the law through breaking the law dishonorest thou god for the name of god is blaspheme among the gentiles through you as it is written for circumcision verily profiteth if thou keep the law but if thou be a breaker of the law thy circumcision is made uncircumcision therefore if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision and shall not uncircumcision which is by nature if it fulfill the law judge thee who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law for he is not a jew which is one outwardly neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh but he is a jew which is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of god that's self-explanatory that's all i'm gonna say um and i'm gonna go to titus chapter one titus chapter one um and read verses 15 to 16 and this is my last place it says unto the pure all things are pure but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure but even their mind and conscience is defiled they profess that they know god but in works they deny him being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate when you're reprobate there's nothing else that the Lord can do with you, which makes you unprofitable unto him and makes it to where you will be cast out into outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. He also said that this, he called them abom abominable and disobedient. So, you know, you can profess to know God all you want, but if you're not doing the things that he's telling us to do, then you're useless to him. And so this vision was just about bearing fruit, you know, um, because if you don't, if you're not bearing fruit, whether that's in, you know, your character, how you are, how you carry yourself as a servant of God, or as in being obedient and letting the Lord use you with the gifts and the talents that he's given you and blessed you with. If, you, if you're not doing those things, then you will be, you will be an unprofitable servant unto God. And when you're unprofitable, you will be cast into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. So nobody wants that. So the best bet is to, you know, work on yourself daily to, to keep a repentant heart, to stay before the Lord, you know, pray in prayers and fastings, 
you know, try, asking him to purge you of the things that's not of him and, you know, just trying to change your ways and align your ways with the Lord. And when it comes to like the things with fear of being used by God and the things he's giving you, asking him to help you in those areas so that you could courageously stand up and allow the Lord to use you in the way that he wants to use you. So that's all that I have, y'all. Um, I probably have some more videos because I have a lot that I have not been posting. Um, just because I've been very busy. So I probably will be back with another video like after this. But until then, I hope someone was edified. Um, peace and blessings to you all and goodbye.